everyone, it's April here and I'm super excited because it's collab time. Myself and Violet Connie Art got together and we decided to do a colour collab. So looking on uh, Connie's Instagram, you'll probably see that she does like the colour purple just a little bit. Purple Christmas bauble, purple butterfly, purple dress, even purple faces. While I on the other hand seem to like every single colour under the rainbow, I use teal as like my branding colour, but I guess if I had to choose I do like yellow. Yellow background, yellow hair, yellow face, even a yellow lime. And we decided to pick the theme of a garden, so I would be doing everything in purple, which I really don't like as a colour, and then Connie would be doing everything in yellow. So first I popped onto Pinterest and I made a lovely little board with some inspiration, and I did this super professional sketch in my sketchbook. And I thought, hold up. I'm terrible at sketching, let's move into Procreate, where the magic can happen. So I ended up with this little sketch. And then I printed that out so I could use it as a template. And this is like the size that the final image is gonna be. So basically I just kind of used my Procreate sketch as a guide, like a very heavily a guide, because I kind of knew what I wanted in my head, but it was really hard to kind of articulate it. So I did spend quite a lot of time making the sketch, going through all the Pinterest images and popping things together. And then finally I got round to picking my colours. So I went through every blue, pink and purple colour I have in watercolour and gouache. And I got to work doing the base layer. So basically the aim of this challenge was to get the other person to use your favourite colour and which probably wasn't their favourite colour. In my case purple is my least favourite colour. So it would not only be a challenge because it's monochromatic but also be a challenge because you're using a colour that maybe you're not familiar with or that you don't use very often. I don't know how much of a challenge uh, it was for Connie until I watched her video, but for me it, was a, it wasn't that much of a challenge, but it was kind of a bit weird, especially in this watercolour stage because I haven't used watercolour for so long. And the colour purple and myself, we're not really like best friends at all. I use it for shadows and stuff and digital art, but that's kind of the only time I'll really use it. I'll normally tend to go for more muted colours or like uh, yellows, pinks blues, even the occasional green. But for me, the most challenging part of this was the watercolour and gouache part. I haven't done landscapes really, I've done maybe two or three in the past, and I haven't used watercolour, like I said, for about six months at least. And I'm not using watercolour paper here, this is a piece of paper from my sketchbook that I ripped out, the Canson Mixed Media sketchbook, which isn't really watercolour, you'll see it buckling quite a lot here. So. When I first started this drawing, I was going to do like 80% watercolour uh, gouache and then finish it off with some digital art. About five minutes into this, I thought, let's switch that and I'll do like basically all of it in Procreate. But I'll just use this as like the base layer for some texture, just laying down some like shadows and stuff. And I think in the end, it does come together quite nicely. And then this is the final image that I scanned in and then I took that into Procreate. So basically what I did in Procreate is I have the scan and then I popped a layer above it and I set it to hue, which basically means it makes everything kind of purple. And I brought that down because what I found is that the scan was really a lot of different colours. It was kind of pinks and blues and quite bright colours. So having that hue on top really brought everything down to kind of a purple tinge. And then I just go through and I'm testing out all the brushes that I want to use because I know that I want to use line art because I always use line art. And from the very beginning when we had this idea, I really wanted to have a really detailed piece. So our idea was to make a garden and because we were using opposite colours, I was using purple and Connie is using yellow, we thought it would be great to have a summer garden and a winter garden. So me picking purple, I'm doing a winter garden. And my first idea that I had was this like abandoned winter garden that's kind of a little bit overgrown. It has all the like tools left out, the wheelbarrow is just hanging hanging out by the, the wood over there, but it has some like nice winter plants growing in the garden. And it's by someone who loves his garden, but maybe just got a little bit busy and is watching Netflix instead. So that's kind of like the idea that I had. I wanted to have a greenhouse that was kind of overrun with plants and stuff, little birds here and there. 
and I really love how it turned out in the end. It's super detailed, which is kind of what I wanted to go with. I am a bit worried that the line art takes over the challenge because the challenge itself was to use the colour purple. And I am using the colour purple, but I definitely think that line art um, makes everything neat and tidy and you know what I mean? Like it could have been a lot more chaotic if I just kept it with watercolour and gouache and I could have had a lot more fun experimenting. But instead I had a lot of fun doing line art. It's like literally one of my favourite things to do. I love adding like little details and stuff. So here I'm doing some ivy and I'll tell you what, ivy is pretty difficult to draw. I tried to draw an ivy leaf like seven times in a row. Got there in the end. So a lot of this challenge is me on the iPad. So I'm sorry if you guys aren't into digital art. I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea or cup of coffee. I love digital art and I also love traditional art, but recently I really uh, loved mixing them together and that could be um, scanning in textures like I've done previously or something like this where you do the background and then you pop details on the top. Or it could just be getting your iPad and chucking some paint on it, although I wouldn't recommend that last idea. So I did do some research to find out what plants grow in winter and there's quite a lot of purple flowers actually that grow during the winter in gardens like crocuses and other purple flowers that I don't know the names of. I also popped down some cabbages which obviously aren't purple but we can use our imagination and just like see it through the filter of wintertime landscape. That's kind of what I did and actually these cabbages were my favourite things to draw. I've never drawn a cabbage before. I mean, it could be cabbage, it could be cauliflower. I don't really mind. I think it looks fantastic. And another thing that I really enjoyed with this video is looking at all the inspiration and drawing the actual garden because I live in a flat right now with my boyfriend and we're saving up for a house. And when I was younger, I never really imagined myself living in a house or having a garden, especially not having a garden because as a child it was my job to clean out the rabbits and to do the weeding when my mum was in the garden. Those were two things that I did not enjoy. So I never actually imagined having a garden or a house, but then obviously you get older, things change, and now I really look forward to having a garden in my future, having my dog lay beside me on the grass when I'm doing my weeding, and I want to grow some plants, I want to have a herb garden. I'm not quite sure about flowers, but I definitely want to have lots of vegetables. So it was really nice just to kind of think about that when I was painting this, thinking about having a little shed in the future, hopefully not full of spiders where I can like pot my plants and stuff and have the little birds join me in the garden. I thought that was just a really lovely little image to have. For the brushes that I'm using in Procreate, for the line art I used the peppermint brush which is kind of a pencil brush. For the painting itself I'm using the gouache brush and this gouache doesn't really act like real life gouache, it's a lot less messy. But um, I do use it because I think it has kind of like a nice texture because it's quite see through so you can see the layers beneath. And I thought it was quite nice because it's like digital gouache, real life gouache, coming together, being happy. I basically just go through at this point, I'm adding a whole bunch of depth and stuff, trying to get the layers right. So things pop out that I want to, things fade into the background that I want to, and try to create a sense of depth, which I think is super important when you're doing a monochromatic image like this. It's kind of the only thing that really sets everything apart. And then finally I get to the fork. I try and fix this fork and the bird so many times and it just seems to keep popping out and it just looks really awkward. So in the end I just uh, go through all of my layers and I just delete it. It wasn't the original sketch too so it was actually quite a pain to delete. Adding a bit more depth to everything so making sure that the shadow and light and stuff is correct. I'm not actually sure where the, the light is coming from in this painting. I'm kind of thinking it's like a muted dull sky because there's not really any harsh shadows anywhere. And then now I'm just doing some final touches with some blending modes to kind of create some light misty areas I guess or some atmosphere and it's almost finished. You can literally spend hours on Procreate messing around with blending modes and opacities until you find something you like. It's a rabbit hole. Then I just go through and add the little dots that I like to add sometimes, well pretty much all the time to my illustrations. 
and it's done. So this was my half of the image and then Connie sent me her half over. So stop the video now if you don't want to ruin the surprise. So this is Connie's on the left here. She did a beautiful summer garden all in yellow and it's so beautiful. I love the sunflowers and the little butterflies and the bees flying around. It's so cute. So basically all I did is I took that tree away in the middle that was kind of throwing everything off merged the yellowish part with the purplish part and then took the wall over into it and then last thing I did is still some bees and a butterfly and bring those over to the purple side of the image and that kind of brings everything together and I think in the end these two images come together so nicely they're such different styles such different colors but I really think they make a beautiful garden so make sure you hop over to Connie's channel to check her side out and let us know in the comments below what's your favourite colour. And that is all from me. I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.